Hi, welcome to my beginner's introduction to painting colour theory. We're going to have a go at doing the colour wheel today. Now this is a very basic colour wheel, but I, I think it's a really good place for people to start. Um, getting to know your paints, getting to have a little bit of background that might help you make some of those decisions that you need to make as you're painting your own work. So, you can see I've drawn up this colour wheel here. You can just use some pots or lids to get this colour wheel drawn up. But I think this one is just... Um, it's very basic, but it's the sort of colour wheel that will allow us to expand as well if we need to. I'm going to do it with you. Remember, you can pause the video at any stage. So if I'm going too fast, just pause, rewind, whatever you need to do. First thing we're going to look at is paints, types of paints. There's heaps of different brands out on the market. And I'm a bit of a collector of all types of brands. People donate brands to me, students leave them behind, I buy some that are on sale sometimes, um, you, yeah, I have a real mix. But doing this colour wheel hopefully will help you also navigate your way through the um, different brands of paints as well. So first thing I want to talk about is there's sort of what I would consider to be three categories when you're talking about paints. Ones like these, the Artilia and the Matisse, are more your professional brand paints. So they've got really strong pigments. So it's something to keep in mind when you are mixing colours because their pigments and this colour would overtake a cheaper brand. The middle of the range of brands, I would say, are something like these Montmartre ones. Um, the Montmartre and probably your um, Joe Sonia type brand are a bit more of like a craft brand. The Joe Sonia are good because they come in a heap of different colours and they've still got pretty strong pigments. Same with the Matisse ones. And these particular ones, sorry, not Matisse, Montmartre, um, are dimension paints. So they have a little bit of more body to them than um, other paints. Now, at the bottom of the scale, we've got more of a primary school type art, very cheap paints like these Renault arts, um, Chromacryl, art culture, uh, ones that the kids probably use at school. You'll find that these paints are usually quite watery. The pigments aren't very strong at all. So if I was trying to mix a green and I was using a really good quality red and this cheap yellow, I would find that I would need an awful lot of yellow to compensate, uh, making orange, sorry, um, to compensate for uh, this red. So I would have a really red orange unless I used heaps and heaps of this particular yellow. Okay, so we're going to get stuck straight into it. Basic colour wheel, this one's got three levels. We're going to start with our primary colours which most of you should know as red, yellow and blue. Now, as I'm painting this, I'm just going to let you know what is really good to um, do when you are making up a colour wheel is actually develop a little bit of a recipe book as well. So if you have a page where you take note of which particular colours create a different colour so that if you need that exact specific shade or tone or um, colour in something, then you know exactly how to do it. So I'm just colouring my red in here. This middle one here is going to be what we would call our pure colour. Now, I'm also going to put a dot of it over here. What I would do if I was you is I would go and I would write the brand and the name of the brand next to this colour. Because this colour wheel is only going to be relevant to the particular paints that you've painted it with. Don't try and come in with a... So that red there was called crimson. If I come back and use this naphthol crimson, then my entire colour wheel is going to be different. 
because that naphthol crimson will change my shade and colour of my purple, it will change the colour of my orange. So it's really important to record which particular paints you've used. The other thing you can do is you can actually create about three or four of these colour wheels, just small ones in a little art journal and that will help you to keep a record of them and it means that you're going to have lots of different solutions, lots of options to look at when you're colouring. I'm going with the blue here. So this particular blue that I'm using was called, uh, was out of the Matisse brand and it was called Primary Blue, so it's exactly that. Sometimes it can be hard to work out what um, the most pure colour would be, the best blue to use or the best red to use. And again, that's why having a couple of different colour wheels can be really useful. For your first one, I would try and get as close to a pure colour as you can. So that would be probably um, with the reds, using more of a cool red like a crimson. Um, a cool blue, which in this case is called primary blue. I wouldn't use um, any ultramarine blues because they have a very purple base. So again, that would change my entire colour wheel. So I could have another colour wheel that I use ultramarine blue on. For my yellow, I'm actually going to use one from the Jo Sonia branch that's called light, yellow light. I haven't completely cleaned my brush very well. And that will go in there. So again, I would be dabbing all these, writing the brand and the name down as I go. So I'm just very quickly filling in those areas. Okay, good. So there are three primary colours. The next stage is our secondary colours. So to get our secondary colours, we mix ones here and here and pop it in here. So yellow, yellow and red to make orange. So I'm not adding any other colours for this entire colour wheel. We don't not use any other colours other than the three, these three that we've started with on our colour wheel. So I'm just adding some yellow to my red right now to get my orange. And I don't need to record this one because I've already got the recipe because I know that these three, exactly what those three colours were, what brand they were. And therefore, I know how to reproduce this exact colour orange. My next secondary colour, go on to yellow and blue together, which will give me green. It's actually giving me a really nice green. Uh, sometimes, if you don't use a cool blue, you can get a very khaki green. See, this one's actually quite a nice bright colour green. I'm just filling that in. Mine's not perfect at the moment because I'm trying to get it done. Okay, our last one, red and blue together, which will give us a purple. And you'll see too, again, if you haven't got a nice cool blue and a cool red, your purple can come out really quite ordinary. And you might want to alternate the amount of blue you put in to the portion of red, and that of course will give you different... Um, Purples. It's not a bad purple there at all. Okay. 
Okay. So that's our very basic primary, secondary colour wheel. Okay. Now these extra pies on our, our extra pie pieces are going to be where on the inside we're going to make tints um, and on the outside we're going to make some shades. Okay. So basically a tint is going to be this colour adding white. A tone is this colour adding grey and a shade is this colour adding black or in my case I like to add the complementary colour to make my shade. So I'll explain a bit more about that as I go along. So to start with, tinting, so I'm going to start with my orange, so my orange is still on my palette here, I need some white paint, I'm using a zinc white, you could use a titanium white, of course if you used um, a warm white, you would get like a quite a muted shade of everything. So that's if you wanted to create a colour wheel that had all muted sort of pastel shades, you could use a nice warm white or, or even a cream that, that would be able to give you um, a, a pastel colour wheel. Just added some white to my orange and you can see we've got what we call a tint of this colour. Now, once you get into more complicated colour wheels, you could actually put that tint over here and have a go at working out how many different um, tints you can get from that one colour. Because obviously the more white I add, the lighter it will get and so on and so on. So um, you could have a little bit of a play around with that and just have a go at seeing how many tints you can actually get out of white and the one colour that you've started with. There's my purple tint. and so on. You can see what I'm doing anyway. So there we have all our initial tints. Now just to give you an example of tinting over here, so if I used, the red's probably a good one to give you a hint on. So if I started here with my first tint, I can then add more white, another tint here, add more white again. I'm only really using the white that's on my brush. And that, uh, the red that's on my brush. So. And that means that I can start to create some really, a really big range of tints. 
just by adding white. So the next part um, is making shades. Okay, so when I think about shades, um, they do say to add black. Most people that know me say I'm, I have a bit of a, an aversion to black. Um, just for this exercise, I will add it. And I'll tell you why I have a problem with black is because people think of black as always being the same. But black out of a tube is always based in another colour, usually green. And I find that the green can make everything muddy and we don't get as pure a colour as we would like. So I'm going to show you a couple of other ways that you can create um, your shades as well. Okay, so let's start with my glue. And you only need a really small amount of black in it because the black is quite overpowering. I'm just going to fill in a little bit here because I want to show you something else with this too. Okay, so we've got quite a, a dark shade of blue. Now, another I, uh, thing I like to use is Payne's Grey. Now, Payne's Grey in different brands does come out quite differently too. In the Artillia brand, it's very much like more of a navy blue. Um, in this particular brand, it is quite black. So, um, I could create another shade instead of using the black, using the Payne's Grey pop that there and make a note of it as well. And that would just help me decipher exactly what colour that I need to use where. The other way to create your tint is to use the complementary colour. Now, I've written complementary colour here, it's opposite. So the complementary colour, it's quite simple. The opposite to blue on the colour wheel is orange. So they are complementary colours. The opposite to purple, is yellow so they are complementary colours. Now if I add orange, a little bit of orange to my blue, which I'll do here to show you. Find some of my orange it's still black. That's it here. So you can see complementary colours do not mix well. in the sense if you're painting them next to them each other in a painting and you didn't want them to mix, it could get very murky and muddy. They do, however, make really good shades. So I can use my complementary colour to get the dark shade without bringing in the black. So this might be a better dark shade for me to use depending on my painting, depending on the use of it. So you would make a note here, shade using complementary, shade using black and if you had another one it could be shade using Payne's Grey. So I would go on and do those for, for all my colours. I'll just do one more for you to see but I won't. So I will use the red. Touch of black. This is my red with a bit of black in it. And again, remember, the black will have to be here, the brand, because otherwise and you could use another black and it could have more of a brown base and you would get a very different result. Now I'm going to mix that red with the complementary colour, so with the green. So that's an idea and you would go on and continue to do that. A couple of other things I just want to talk about is the tones. So tones, I've written in here that you can add grey. So 
In saying that, the other way you get the tone is to add these two together. So essentially, if you've used the black here and you've used the white here, you're adding grey. But you can do it using the complementary colour and a little bit of white and that will give you lots of different tones as well of um, this particular colour. Um, the other thing I have written down here is inoculus colours, which is the colours next to each other on the colour wheel. So sometimes when you're trying to start off a painting and you're not sure what sort of colour scheme you want to use, you might want to pick some inoculus colours next to each other because you know that they're going to work pretty well together. If you're painting something and it's been mostly in um, the blues and purples, maybe even a bit over here, this would be our cool area. These are our cool colours. So if we divided this colour wheel in half, we've got all our cool colours over here and our warm colours over here. Oh. Warm colours. So all our reds, oranges, yellows are all our warm colours and all our blues, greens and purples are our cool colours. So if you were painting something that was mostly in cool colours and you wanted to bring in, felt like it needed something a little bit spectacular to add in there, something that would jump off the page, you can add a complementary colour. And that, like, they really bounce off each other. So an example of that is something like this. So it's just a mainly blue abstract sort of work in the background. Bringing in those oranges just give that really good contrast. So sometimes we can use our complementary colours to create a little bit of contrast, to make something stand out and to give something an, an accent as well. Okay, so other than that, I just wanted to talk about... Um, monochromatic colours. So when we're talking about monochromatic colours, we're talking about all these ones here. So if I was going to do a monochromatic painting in red, it would use this entire section here. All the shades, I could use all the shades, I could use all the tints, I can use all the tones and create a nice monochromatic painting. So same with any of these, you could do a monochromatic painting in yellow. Okay, so doing that can be a really good step following this to create, you might pick something really simple like an apple and try and paint the entire still light just using all the shades, tints and colours that you've created in that wedge there. And then you might do another one in the yellow wedge, another one in the blue wedge. And that can be a really good next step from this colour wheel here. Um, so I hope that's been a little bit informative for you. Please comment, let me know what it is um, you want to know if you have any more questions. And we'll follow it up from there. Thank you.